Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And I actually saw an interesting story in Radio Times. Uh, uh, was it the other day? A couple of days ago? Amazing. What made it more amazing? It was in the science fiction section. Now, when I say interesting... I mean, interesting as in it actually interested me as opposed to, you know, I mean, oh, I can make a, mo a, a, a video about that and uh, uh, take the piss out of it. That's I find that interesting. This actually genuinely in, in, interested me. It's talking about uh, uh, unmade Doctor Who movies. I love unmade Doctor Who movies, right? They always, always, always fascinate me. I put... Uh, I, put, I put a bunch of videos out about it. My favourite one is, I know I say his name wrong, James Bond, Piss uh, uh, Bronson. Or Brosnan, I always, it's always wrong. Literally, always wrong, right? I, the way, whatever way I say it is the wrong way. That was the one from uh, uh, like the early nineties. It was supposed to be directed by Leonard Nimoy for a while. Uh, uh, that's fascinating, right? That's fascinating. so. This is another one which I totally forgot about, and it came about because of the four K release of Doctor Who and the Daleks, which looks. Freaking gorgeous. Anyway, we're going to be looking at all that stuff. We're going to be uh, uh, talking about it. We're going to read the article. We're going to do, do a bit of a deep dive into it. Uh, so you, uh, 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 you can see <laughs> you can see what it's like. See, this is a, this is one of the advantages of be, being an old wrinkly fart like me. Uh, uh, I remember stuff, right? I remember, uh, I think it was the 90s, right? Or in Doctor Who magazine or early 2000s, before the, uh, 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 the Rusty Davis era. Right, uh, I remember an interview talking uh, uh, when he talked about it for like three or four lines. Uh, I, I guess about the fact actually, the one I really find fascinating, I can't remember what release it's on. My guess it's probably the uh, uh, the uh, Paul McGann TV movie, probably that one, or it's all survival, one of the two. Uh, Sylvester McCoy's last story. There, there was a, a, a obviously fake news story. About I can't remember the name of the actor. There was some actor who got, I was driving around in the car saying uh, um, that uh, 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 I can't say the new Doctor Who. This was after uh, uh, eighty nine when uh, when it was uh, uh, cancelled off the air. I was going to say off the air, but no, cancelled. It was cancelled, uh, and it was obviously he was making it up. Right, <laughs> somebody was making up something. Like he says he filmed like two or three episodes. Uh, uh, they had a uh, uh, a police box, uh, uh, like a telephone box, TARDIS instead of a police box, uh, with the with the windows. But it, there is no shred of evidence other than this guy saying it happened. Anyway, that's fascinating. That is absolutely fascinating. That documentary. I, I can't remember what what DVD it's on, uh, uh, but it's really worth checking out. Anyway, uh, uh, almost as fascinating as this. So fine. Before we anyway, can you hit the like, share, and subscribe button? Freaking love you doing all those things. And thank you very, very, very much. Uh, uh, YouTube throttling my account like crazy, right? I keep seeing it trying to. It's like it's the first time I've experienced shrinkage. Who were uh, 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 in YouTube? I've experienced shrinkage in real life many times. You know, I really, I keep going. Can it get any smaller? Uh, 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 apparently yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you all the secret Jewish love notes. Yeah, all the secret Jewish love uh, 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 secrets. <laughs> secret Jewish love secrets. Okay, here's a big one. Here's a big one. Uh, when 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 you meet meet uh, this is for boys. When you meet a lady love, you know somebody who you want to commit with, commit to, and spend your life together. Make sure she has small hands, little hands. Uh, uh, it makes anything in them look a lot bigger. <laughs> and, you know, you can follow that advice if you're not Jewish too. <laughs> Although, if you're not Jewish, you probably won't have that problem. Anyway, I don't... Okay, fine. This is the complete, complete aside, but it's worth mentioning at this point. There's a great fish restaurant. <laughs> okay, how do I get to this? I don't know. There's a great fish restaurant in, in uh, 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 Tiberias. Tiberia, we call it here in Israel, right? And uh, I, I'm not sure if it's kosher or anything. It was kosher. Anyway, you have tours and tours and tours of Christian uh, groups go there. Uh, uh, and they get like this meal of fish and they go into the, the, the canera and they baptize and they love it, right? Oh, wait. And I'm telling bus after bus after bus after all day, every day. And this food, food, uh, food is pretty good. So there was a, uh, uh, must have been, been like a, a, an American black church. I mean, I don't think the church was literally painted black, but people in it were, uh, 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 if not exclusively, uh, uh, the majority of them were were black. So uh, but one of the good things about the whole uh, uh, 20, uh, 2020 riots is you can say that we're black now and not African-American. African-Americans just sounded so 
patronizing. It really, they always hated saying that, but I think Black Tail's much more uh, uh, honest. Anyway, I, I, I was there. I went, to, uh, I went to the bathroom. And it was very busy because there's lots and lots of people there, right? Uh, uh, you know, and I was wait, waiting for the stool rather than a, uh, a urinal. This is all important information. Yeah, I'm not just throwing this in for no reason. Anyway, there, there, there was a large gentleman standing there wait, waiting to get in. They said, uh, uh, you know, why, why aren't you going to the uh, uh, why are you going to the stool? Why aren't you just going to the urinal? I said, oh. Yeah, and he 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 was a black gentleman, as I, as I recall. Said, oh, I don't want to scare the natives. And let me tell you, we would have been scared. We would have been scared. Anyway, I digress. Like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, uh, sign up my Substack, which is my email newsletter. Which, as long as I remember to do it, I send out every day when I have when I have content. I think today's the day. Hopefully, today's the day. I'm going to be sending out another issue of biblical. Ah, oh, I'm such an idiot. I should have it sitting next to me. Uh, uh, another issue of biblical. Uh, um, to uh, 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 the paid subscribers, it's five, uh, five, five bucks a month. Uh, they're getting three issues this month, right? Three issues. <laughs> I'm sending them for three bloody months, and I'm, I'm putting out regular uh, uh, smaller comic strips on the uh, <coughs> on the on 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 the free version. So sign up to that. That's very very helpful. Uh, uh, sharing this video, huge. It's I'm, I'm telling you, huge. It's 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 very very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, subscribe is very good. Comment, let me know what you think. Fine, let's get into the story, right? Uh, and doink is over here, Radio Times. And, and we see, of course, Radio Times has the rainbow, uh, uh, <laughs> rainbow version of the logo. I mean, really, I, I mean, honestly, again, I grew up in the 80s. I, I, I don't think anybody really minded anybody being gay by the 90s. I don't, I really don't think there was any, I mean, look. Everybody gets oppressed for different reasons. Everybody gets crap all the time, right? Everybody, and they'll, people will find any reason they can. I just, by the 90s, it seemed like there weren't, wasn't any queer bashing going on, which I, I don't think is a good, well, I don't think good thing that it went on. I don't think it's a good thing that it stopped going on, you know? I, I, I just, I don't, uh, uh, I don't see this inhuman oppression, you know, that, that we need to uh, make everything rainbow. Actually, interestingly enough, inter again, another aside, interestingly enough, the, uh, 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 the, the whole story of the flood in the Bible, right? It ends up with God saying, uh, I'm not going to do that again. And as proof of that, I'm going to, uh, as you know, this covenant, where I'm going to make a rainbow. Right, and when I ever see a rainbow, I'll go. Oh, you should be destroyed, but uh, uh, I'm not going to because I made this deal with you. So the reason the flood happened again, I, this is thousands of years ago. I didn't make this up. The reason the flood happened, according to to uh, uh, Jewish philosophy, was uh, uh, the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, I mean, literally, right? It was uh, the thing that pushed uh, uh, it over the edge to make make it happen was the legitimizing of any um of marriages of of legal marriages between anything anything that wasn't a man and a woman right uh, uh, and that was the thing God said no more no more like I, I, like he looks at us today where you got little kids hacking off bits of their body you know I'll be coerced by Disney hey kids why do you try transitioning before you're 12 I mean like it's very strange it's very strange go on go on so I, that's my theory I think the LGBTQ plus alliance the queer alliance I don't because like you know, I, I, I feel so bad for like normal gay people and normal trans people. You know, which we had before this insanity, right? They they were they're always intertwined with it, everything. I, I get it. As a normal straight person, I understand you're a normal gay person and and, and a normal trans person or, or whatever, right? Right. I understand the majority of people are normal. This the people still pushing this stuff are not right. Are, are not at all. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Doctor Who unmade film script from Dalek movie writer featured two doctors. So the doctors it featured, and I remember this uh, uh, quite well, was uh, one of them anyway, was uh, um, Michael Sherd. Michael Sherd had a pit. Let's, let's find it. Pull up his. Uh, uh, it's over here, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, Michael Sherd. He's appeared in a lot of Doctor Who. Well, firstly, Mr. Bronson, right? We all love Mr. Bronson. Uh, what's, what, uh, so he appeared in. Remembrance of Daleks and a Headmaster. Castro Valve with Murgrave. I forgot he was in that. Uh, the Invisible Enemy is Low. Uh, uh, not his best performance. Period of Mars. What a wonderful turn he did in that as uh, Lawrence Garman. Uh, uh, Mind of Evil, Dr. Roland Summers. I, I forgot he was there as well. And The Ark. I, I don't even remember. i got to go back and watch that, right? So Michael Schnell. Yeah, Mr. Bronson. He's also appeared in, uh, 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 was it Empire Strikes Back and 
He played uh, uh, the leader of the naughty National Socialists uh, from Germany in the 1930s in uh, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, right? So he good actor, right? Also, one of the best big Finnish releases, uh, it's probably cheap, it's probably cheap as chips, right? It's probably like a couple of bucks. Uh, Stones of Venice, that was from the first Paul McGann season. Uh, he played Oslo, Os Count Ozio or something like that. It's written by Paul Marks. My God, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Really good. That's a really, really genuinely good story. Quite enjoying the uh, um, the uh, new Master Box set as well. I'm, I'm two stories into that. Anyway, Milza Stubzitsky, uh, Stub, uh, Stub, bleh, Sub Otsky, who wrote, uh, two do uh, who wrote two Doctor Who films starring P uh, Peter Cushing, also produced a screenplay for a third movie. So I, I thought this story was going to be about uh, the movie you wanted to do based on the chase. Uh, um, by the way, another movie where they the proposed movie from the nineties, maybe two thousands, was um, what's the name of the bloke who did Event Horizon? Ah, uh, went on to do Resident Evil movies. Uh, good director. I like I like Event Horizon. That's really nicely creepy. Anyway, he wanted to have Lawrence Fishburne as the Doctor and regenerate. I think reasonably early on. Uh, uh, so that's probably after the Matrix movies, probably. <coughs> anyway, uh, a pair of Doctor Who movies starring Peter Cushing, Doctor Who and the Daleks, uh, and Dark Image were released in mid sixties. Okay, so we're starting from basic. Okay, uh, I've now been remastered for four K Ultra HD release. I I'm I'm waiting for it to come on to uh, um uh what's it called da uh, download. Here, let's look at the release. Freaking gorgeous. I mean, this is uh, they should have some some of the pictures in here. This is absolutely gorgeous. Let me uh, scroll down here. So although it's deceptive, like this is fifty pounds, right? And the still book is thirty pounds. I, I gotta wait for the download, right? Uh, uh, but see, it all falls me into thing. I really, really want. I kind of do. Look at this package. Uh, firstly, the packaging is beautiful. I love the poster. Uh, uh, I love the little book. I like like the bold red design. They have all these little things. These con. Uh, these was it. Uh, uh, they are beyond reason. They uh, wish only to conquer. Uh, uh, UK exclusive, highly collectible Dalek coins. What would I want with that? <laughs> I don't understand what I would possibly want with that. Uh, uh, and uh, this other one said, uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks, 1965, uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks, right? So I don't know, but it just makes me think I want, I mean, this looks gorgeous. I'm not going to put that poster up. I'm a grown-up. I'm over 50. Where am I? Well, in here. I don't have any room to put it up, right? Well, if I put it up, I would frame it. And quite frankly, look, it looks gorgeous. I love the design on it. I could probably do the same thing. You know, I could probably make my... I'd like a very... It looks like tracing, cartoony type of stuff. Uh, 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 um, but still, this makes me want it, right? This really makes me want it. Uh, there's, a, there's Alan's on there. And please... Really? You want to tell me there wasn't representation in Doctor Who until now? I mean, look at Aladon. Doesn't get much gayer. Really? I mean, it, I mean, like, he could be sucking a dick, I guess. but uh, uh, And I'm sure he was in between scenes. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, looks very gay. Looks very gay. Anyway, anyway it looks cool. So what's, what's in this? You get the... Uh, uh, includes a Blu-ray disc and a 4K Ultra disc. Um, UK, uh, UK exclusive, highly collectible Doctor Who and the Daleks coined. Limited first run only. 64-page booklet with new... I'm never going to read this. New essays, photos, original book, uh, uh, press... Uh, was it? Original uh, press book from 65 and more. Exclusive mini version of Titan's forthcoming coffee table book, Doctor Who and the Daleks, the official story of the films by John Ward. Oh, that must be over there. Uh, I actually probably would read that, but I think I'd rather get the coffee table book, quite frankly. Two posters, original album, brand new by uh, Johnny... Dob uh, Rusky and four art cards. And it's all gorgeous. The art cards. I'm never, ever, ever going to open and look at any of these things, right? Ever, ever, ever in a million years. But I still want it. And that's how bizarre it is. I just really want it. It looks gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, uh, it's been suggested over the years the third film, uh, like its predecessors, would have been based on TV series featuring the Daleks, specifically the 1965 The Chase. But the underwhelming box office returns of the second movie saw these plans abandoned. <coughs> Appearing at the BFI South Bank London to promote the 4K release of the existing two films, uh, uh, Sergei Sabatovsky, and I say, <coughs> that's one of the only things I miss about living in London, all that culture. Oh my God, freaking love that. Being able to go to um, the, you know, go to the South Bank release and things like that. 
I absolutely adore that. I like to, uh, yeah, I like all the all, all the uh, Friends of the Theater. I'm assuming that's still going on. That's what it was like in the 80s and 90s when I lived there. Um, uh, but the original son uh, writer, uh, son of original films writer Milton uh, Sabosky, there was a great Doctor Who short trip where, uh, short trip, uh, oh, oh, what was it going? It was from Doctor Who magazine where they had like these one page prose stories where the John Pertwee Doctor goes to the cinema one afternoon while working in a unit and, and sees the Dalek movies and just thinks they're the funniest things ever. And they're really fun. They're really, really fun. You know what? I should try and dig that out and uh, send it to Dr. Alex. I'm like, that, that'd be good. Like, that'd be good content for his channel. Um, fine, where are we up to? Uh, 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 produced a document from his father's archives dated 19th where laid out the agreement between BBC, Daleks, Creator, Terranator, and uh, Iru Productions. Uh, people have often asked about the third movie. The first agreement was for two films, uh, uh, Sabotsky clarified. As long as the first movie was made within the year, and the second movie could be uh, exercised the rights, made, uh, the rights to make a second movie. However, uh, Sab, uh, Sabotsky revealed that the second, uh, the second deal was negotiated following the 1965 Doctor and the Daleks would have had would have allowed for a third film. There's a further agreement that it was entered into. They gave the rights to make a third movie, uh, which of course was never done. He explained. It was so. This is the uh, uh, the chase essentially. This is the Doctor Who and the Mechanoids. But I don't think this is the story they're talking about. Uh, it was on the same uh, uh, same terms as the original. So my feeling is the option lapsed. Okay. The though a third uh, movie never materialized. Uh, Sabotsky further revealed that his father did, in fact, produce a screenplay for a, a proposed sequel that remains in his family's possession and that, um, is also displayed at the BFI event. Big finish! What's up with you, mate? Get that script and make that movie! Hey, okay? ASAP! Uh, this script, however, was uh, not an adaptation of any existing uh, Doctor Who television serials. Many years later, maybe 15 years later, no, so this was 65. Uh, well, the next one came out in 66. So this is 98. So this is 22 years later. You're seven years out, mate. Um, it was clearly still on his mind because he prepared a script called Doctor Who's Greatest Adventure. That's the one. Uh, it was actually a repurposing of the of the script for the horror film entitled King Crab. Uh, the original title was even worth Night of the Crabs. <laughs> well, that's, uh, you get that with uh, uh, inexpensive prostitutes. So, you know, listen, there's some things you, you should not skimp on. A good doctor's probably think you should uh, roll out the boat on. Good, ac good accountant. If you need a good accountant, if you have enough money to need a good accountant, pay for a good accountant and prostitute. I mean, really, if you're paying for sex, I mean, you don't want to get the skanky, uh, uh, yeah, McDonald's version to you. Uh, you want to, uh, listen, that's just me for you, okay? Uh, maybe I'm not the demographic of uh, 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 that they're going for, but uh, maybe. Uh, like other crabs, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that aged badly. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, wouldn't it be great if the trailer for that had uh, uh, all these words that 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 were like completely changed now? Like, uh, you know, you know, the, the guy's like, I have a queer feeling about this. <laughs> oh, uh, please, please, Mark Cat has come. Some, somebody make 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 that skit. It sounds hilarious. Uh, it was with two doctors, a young and an old doctor. Uh, which is uh, an idea that ha has been returned to. Well, I guess. <coughs> it's unclear if any, of the, if <coughs> any of the leads of the multi-doctor motion picture would have been Peter Cushing. But it's speaking exclusively to Radio Times, Jill Curzon, who played Louise, uh, niece Louise in 1966's Invasion of the Earth uh, 2150, and Robert Roberto Toad, who played the scientist's granddaughter Susan, in both of them, insisted that they would uh, they we would, would have been game to reprise the roles. Oh, really? What a jobbing actor's not going to turn down work? Well, that's weird. Who saw that coming? Really? Uh, I think we would have done it. Uh, uh, done another said to Tovey with Curzon. I think yes, definitely we would have done another. Yeah, if you're offered the bloody money, yes, you would have done it, right? If you're offered the work, you probably would have taken it. I, I always think it's funny. I, I, I listen to the actors on Big Finish Disc, right? And and the actors always say, well, when Big... This was on the Master Box set. I was listening to Well, whenever Big Finish calls, I immediately say yes. Really? Really? How much work do you say no to? 
Right? Uh, my guess is not much, right? My guess is not much. Which, okay, another aside, which I always think, I thought was funny. You had, uh, uh, not Neil Patrick Harris, uh, uh, who's ne- weird me, Doctor Who. What's his name? Spider-Man. Uh, 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 oh, he was in two Spider-Man movies and they never made the third one, but it wasn't very good. Dark in Manhattan, whatever his name is, right? So he was really upset about this Christian Baker uh, uh, who declined, who turned down the work to make a wedding cake for a same-sex marriage. Uh, uh, and since then, they've been har- harassing, har- harassing him and saying, I've seen this guy be interviewed. You couldn't meet a more loving, sweet person, right? I mean, uh, look, I'm, I'm Jewish, so I'm not overly, you know, into, you know, into Jesus and his teachings. Uh, uh, this guy, this guy uh, uh, is an absolute epitome of, of like, the, just the, the total love that, 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 that you, you get from Rio, you know, these great Christians, right? Such a sweet guy. So he says, he, he stopped making custom cakes. He stopped making wedding cakes. He said, like, these are the ones on the mat. That's all I, that's all I produce, right? Uh, uh, and they kept, uh, they, 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 they kept on going after him. So I remember him saying, uh, uh, what was it, bloody, I can't remember. Uh, uh, Look, it's just a cake. Just make your cake. So I'd love to say to him that, like, dude, yeah, just just do a a, a Brexit or a Trump campaign video ad, right? They'll pay you. They'll pay you going Ray. Right? Just do it. It's, look, it's just a song you're singing. What's up, right? I, I what? Well, it, it's like I wish people would just treat themselves the way they treat others. It's actually quite a good idea. Just in the same way you give yourself a parcel. A lot of stuff, and we all do. Uh, uh, you should try and give other people passes as well. Um, it was a very happy set on both hills. Yeah, you're all being paid. <laughs> Again, uh, uh, I, I believe it was a happy set. Uh, uh, Toby elaborated. Uh, there were never any dramas. Every got on from Roy Castle playing Ian to Jenny Linden playing Barbara to Jill and Bernard Cribbins playing uh, Tom Campbell. Everyone got on. There were no tra- tantrums. And I think uh, they'd say, uh, uh, they if they said yes to another one, Peter would have took, well, again, I mean, I don't like, what, what, in what universe are you living that actors go, no, no, I'm not going to take this work on this, uh, uh, on this seasonal occasional business. I'm just going to go back waiting tables again. Well, in what universe does that happen? Yes, we know you would have done another one, okay? Uh, Curzon also uh, challenged the accepted notion the third one having been made in the 60s due to diminishing box office. I think the box office takes were good. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think that was it. Oh, that's interesting. See that? I think it was more like uh, life changing. Gordon Fleming, who directed both movies, was in America and he went to America same time as I did. He took uh, me to uh, lunch a couple of times in Hollywood, uh, and I never talked about going uh, going back to do that. Whatever the reason appears, uh, 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 it appears the complete Doctor Who movie script exists and has yet been ever proved. Your, your move, Big Finish. Yes, I do agree with you. So yeah, this again, it's the '98 movie that with uh, where we can re- we learn about a bit more over here. There you go, Doctor Fat, iconic uh, Aberdeen actor Michael Sheard could have been a Doric Time Lord in the TARDIS. Right, uh, um, fascinating. Right, absolutely fascinating. With the unmistakable whooshing sound, the TARDIS materialized, uh, materialized into existence from the depth of space. Uh, in the blue box, they open the door, uh, uh, steps out, says, uh, uh, Doctor steps out to say, fit like. I, I don't know what that means. Is that an Aberdeen expression? Oh, fit like. Uh, uh, okay. Aberdeen-born actor Michael Sherwood was once approached to play the Doctor after appearing in blockbusters such as The Empire Strikes Back. Released 40 years ago. Blimey, not today. This is an article from two companies there. And, of course, the tyrannical uh, uh, deputy head, Mr. Bronson. Uh, I really got to watch uh, Grain Chill again. Like, go back and watch those old episodes of Grain Chill. Maybe he wasn't tyrannical, right? Maybe he was just, like, following... I really don't remember. I remember they wanted to uh, um, portray him as being being uh, tyrannical. I could probably be interested to see it, looking at it from adult eyes. He's like, oh, he's just doing his job. Right? <laughs> doing, doing it quite well. Uh, although the the best version of Grange Hill ever was in the Young Ones, I think the second season they had a, a Grange Hill. Uh, uh, I think it was the Young Ones, right? Uh, uh, and like they're playing video games, and uh, a kid comes in, quick, we've got to make signs so racism won't, won't racism won't be coming an issue in our school. Uh, uh, and then you had a Mister Bronson, right? I was it was Ben Elton play one of the kids, right? Ben Elton play one of the kids, and, and, and uh, uh, he said, "Don't you realize you're speaking in such a terrible way?" Influences kids to uh, 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 children across the country speak badly, and they, no, 
It's a piss. Okay, what was it like? Hello, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Liberal. I think that was his name. We uh, we're the only kids in the country that don't say. F- and it cuts off. <laughs> Uh, but Doctor Who was a role he aspired to most. Ah, wow, I didn't know that. After a long association with the iconic BBC show, BBC show <coughs> he worked with all Doctors, including uh, William Hartnell, much longer Tom Baker than any other Doctor, <coughs> with n- numerous guest appearances. Does he? Did he appear with more people than, than, than uh, Nicholas Courtney? Oh, 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 let's have a look. So he's in the, the first Doctor, the third Doctor, uh, the fourth Doctor... The fifth doctor and the seventh doctor. So he's with five doctors. So the brigadier appeared with, um, well, obviously the second doctor, the third doctor, the fourth doctor, uh, fifth doctor, and then six and uh, six. No, but on big finish he did. Spectral uh, Lanyon Moore, not bad. It's okay. Uh, and seventh doctor. So he's tied. He okay. Nicholas Courtney probably did more. Uh, uh, yeah, more, more more episodes. Um. Right, uh, hugely popular with fans. And Michael Shern, uh, uh and Michael, who lost his battle with cancer 15 years ago, yeah, it's very sad, uh, would have become a fantastic Time Lord and one hugely popular with fans, according to Alan Lear, the doctor, uh, the UK Doctor Who Appreciation Society. He was a firm fan favorite. Well, he, he, look, he already he always bought the goods, he always had great characters. I mean, I know which is my favorite Michael Shern appearance. It's between Pyramids of Mars and, and Remembrance of the Daleks. I I, I like the, um, oh man, that scene where he meets his brother. It's heart-wrenching, right? It really is heart-wrenching. But I do like him being controlled by the Daleks, like grabbing whoever it is, the, the, the good-looking fascist kid who <laughs> was working for uh, uh, countermeasures before, before they, 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 they were countermeasures. Uh, uh, um you know, I liked him. Like, oh, obey. You know, he really. He, I, I love. He's a great actor. I really like Michael Shirt. Uh, I think his Doctor would have been a lot more understated and possibly more uh, with a more darker edge, rather than the wackier Tom Baker and Matt Smith style of Doctor. Uh, there would have been more depth to the uh, depth of the character. I believe that. So the proposed film version, uh, Michael was approached to step in the TARDIS in '98. There you go, for a, a proposed film version uh, of the then mothball series. Uh, TV series. The uh, Evening Express reported at the time that producer uh, Mitch Henderson uh, saw Michael as the ideal Doctor for his plans. Uh, Mitch said he would have loved to uh, love to play the Doctor <coughs> if he could get get the rights secured. So this will be after. <coughs> this will be while Coast to Coast, I think, had the rights, so or maybe after. Maybe after that. Um, the product sadly fell through uh, my, uh, for Michael, who made six guest appearances, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the lifelong Doctor Who fan, Alan said, uh, he appeared with William Hartnell. Okay, well, I just said all this. Uh, uh, and he did an audio with, with uh, um, uh, Paul McGann. Yeah, again, uh, 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 Stones of Venice, really good one, right? Really, really good one. Um, let's, see, let's see if we can pull that up. Uh, ah. Big finish. Maybe I can. Maybe let's see if I can spell it right. It's only two words, relatively simply. Right. Let's see if it comes up. Oh, there you go. Uh, search stones of Venice. I don't know how much it is. There you go. Two ninety nine. I'm telling you, it's so worth two ninety nine. Right, if you have a VPN and you're in the, uh, you set yourself to uh, America, two ninety nine. It although well, I don't know what the exchange rate is now. Um, what's the blow for it? The Doctor and Charlie. Yeah, this will this again. This was like their third or fourth story. It was really good. Uh, decide to take a well deserved uh, uh, break from the monotony of being chased, shot at, and generally suffering antisocial behaviour at the hands of others. And so they end up in Venice, what uh, went into Charlie's future as the great city and prepares to sink beneath the water for the last time. Yes, there's this real, like, finality with it, right? It's such a good story. I really like this story. I wish I, wish I had more time to listen to stuff because this is great, right? Uh, I wanted to really listen to Nightmare Fair as well. I, bet, I, I, I can't think I prefer that to uh, Celestial Toymaker, although I have the Celestial Toymaker in audio as well. Uh, which would uh, which would be momentous if uh, if rather dispiriting uh, event to witness itself. However, 
The machinations of uh, a lovesick aristocrat, a proud historian, and a rabid high priest uh, of a really quite dodgy cult combine to make Venice the Swan Song uh, a night to remember. And there's a rebellion by the web-footed amphibious underclass, a, a, mystery, a mystery of disappearing corpses, a disappearing corpse, and the truth behind the curse going back further than curses usually do. And the Doctor and Charlie are forced to wonder, uh, not one, a wonder. Um, Jess, what is that? What? Okay, oh, yeah, wonder. Uh, Jess, what they? Uh, uh, Jess, what they have got themselves involved with this time? Great story, really great, great story. Who did that cover? Is the information there? It's uh, covered by Clayton Hickman. Yeah, oh man. So yeah, you, you, I haven't seen that style of cover for a while. Well, that's a nice, nice cover. Anyway, where is it? Back over here. Um. Uh, Michael's such a phenomenal actor and he disappeared completely inside his characters. That is true. I do agree with you, right? I really do agree with you. Uh, he brought with a, a solidity of character acting that uh, is essential to a fantasy show like Doctor Who. You need the characters to be grounded in reality in order that you can suspend your disbelief with the, uh, the unreality of the situation. Always warm and friendly. Michael, uh, who was brought up in the uh, Colton place of uh, West End, and went to uh, Aberdeen Grammar. I see. I always think we're staying. We're talking about London. Uh, earned a special place in the hearts for his love of attending Doctor Who conventions. Yes, yeah. He was. He was a big. Uh, atten I tell you. I, I, I think Myth Makers, uh, Real Time has a bunch of great content. They should really. I think they probably have uh, been, been re uh, releasing them. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I always like 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 the poetry panels, or like the poetry panels. I should say. I think it hasn't been one for twenty years. Uh, more. He was always very raw, warm and very friendly. He was one of those actors who embraced the fans and made the fans embrace him. Who were? <laughs> so you can say that nowadays. Uh, um, uh, Alan had a personal. Uh, Alan has a personal favorite amongst uh, Michael's many appearances too, because Festa McCoy was my doctor. Yeah, I'm the same way. <clears throat> my favorite role was playing headmaster, remembrance of the Daleks, uh, widely regarded as the best uh, McCoy story ever. Oh, that's fighting talk, mate. That's fighting talk. Best look. It's the first really good one. I mean, that's be fair. <coughs> I mean, look, we came in. Oh, look, season 24, bit dodgy, right? But they were working out how to make it. Uh, 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 nothing really worked. It sort of started to come together by Dragonfire. But then, oh, my God. Remembrance of the Daleks. It was insane. The quality jump was just breathtaking, right? Uh, uh. But then, you know, you got a lot of good stories. Uh, you got, uh, um, I like Happiness Patrol. <laughs> you know, I do. I like uh, Greatest Show in the Galaxy. Uh, uh, I like, uh, I think Greatest Show is fantastic, right? Uh, uh, Curse of Fenric. Uh, Dra uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Ghost Light. I mean, these are all survival. Oh, excellent story. I, I always thought you could take most of these stories. I was watching Ghost Light the other night. I thought the same thing about that. But the thing about survival is if you just take the original footage, Right and recut it into a uh, uh, um, you know hour long forty five minutes to an hour and ten minutes how, however long it comes out right uh, movie format put new special effects on it give it new music uh, uh, you that's a contemporary production you can put that on BBC it'll get minimally six million right it will get major uh, viewers I think it'll probably do do more I think there's a lot of scope for uh, uh, for that with uh, with the Spencer McCoy Doctor. Um, and, oh, the latest rumor, uh, but the, your, this rumor will be going around by the time this comes out, is that uh, uh, Sylvester McCoy is one of the returning legacy actors in the in Jodie's finale. <laughs> uh, a teaching role must have been called back to Mr. Bronson uh, in Grainshill. Well, he was uh, the deputy head of Grainshill. He never made it headmaster, so Doctor Who actually promoted him to reward uh, for his long service. Uh, and he thinks Michael would have loved the uh, the new Doctor Who. I think so too. He uh, was launched just months before he died in ninety five. What? Which was look what? Oh, you're talking about uh, um, the Gaz movie, right? Uh, it was he died. Okay, the movie came out in ninety six. Uh, I don't understand. Okay. Uh, uh... Uh, I think he would have been very keen to uh, to be uh, be in it uh, and to con continue what he had been for so many years. He respects his fellow actors like uh, Chris Eccleston and uh, Derek Jackson. It must have been 2005 he died. 
I'm, I'm sure they got that wrong. Um, uh, Derek Jacoby, that sort, sort of quality of actor, uh, would have been uh, champing at the bit to get stuck in with them. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, there he is from Star Wars. Uh, is he the one who ends up getting false choked to death by Darth Vader? Uh, is it, oh, we, we came out, you came out of hyperspace sp- sp- too quickly. <laughs> you, don't fail me, General Nadine. Uh, <laughs> I just got, I got a random bits rattling in my head. I know it kind of slots in somewhere. Of course, of course, Doctor Who was the only science fiction blockbuster uh, that he, uh, which featured Michael who moved to who moved to England when he was fifteen. Uh, he was Admiral Ozzy, yeah, the, uh, Ozel, uh, commander of the Imperial Star Destroyer, who was choked to death. Thank you for filling me in. Uh, um, uh, the franchise, one of the franchise's most memorable scenes. Uh, George Lucas thought so. The revelation came with uh, with the Evening Express in ninety seven with Michael, whose father uh, was a Church of Scotland. <coughs> Minister, <coughs> it was a naughty admiral. Darth Vader killed him just by looking at him. <laughs> right? He said Admiral Ozzel was in charge of Darth Vader's spaceship. Uh, uh, what's it called again? I can't remember. Uh, uh, um, uh, he took it too close to the planet too soon and revealed the position. He was a naughty admiral. Uh, uh, Darth Vader uh, killed him just by looking at him. He did a bit of this, mate, as well. <laughs> Uh, later on, Steven Spielberg went off to France uh, and George Lucas um, uh, met us off the boat. He said, I wanted to tell you. Uh, uh, later on with Steven Spielberg, he went off to her. He said, I wanted to tell you, your death scene in Empire Strikes Back was the best I've ever seen. Okay, that's high praise, right? That's very, very high praise. Um, Michael appears in two of Spielberg's bot blasters, Raider of the Lost Ark, uh, playing a U-boat captain. And uh, Indian Jones, uh, Last Crusade, playing the naughty national socialist uh, leader himself. We played that role five times. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're trying to get the notebook. I was also in, uh, uh, I'll remember this one, right? The Tomorrow People. Uh, uh, the, yes, I remember there was, uh, uh, when they, he woke him up, right? And he was like, ah, I'm here to rule the world. That's a, that's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Bit silly. Uh, uh, what can you do? So he was friends. Okay, and this is just a retrospective bit now. Worked with almost every big star. Uh, and I've seen and um, done uh, every TV series he told The Express. Uh, yet the role he stood out for most people was a cer- uh, of a certain visual. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael's portrayal of the fierce of Mr. Bronson uh, with a character, you boy! Oh, I I get, that sends shivers down my spine. He was in Blake 7 too. Get out of here. Wait, 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 wait. He was in Blake 7 too. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I remember, now I remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so many letters from people that say uh, they had a Mr. Bronson school. That's why it works. Okay, this is why Russell D. Davis' scripts work, right? This is why his characters seem real. Because we all know them, right? Everybody knows Jackie Tyler or, like, many versions of that, right? Everybody knows Rose Ty- Tyler. Everybody knows a Mickey Smith, right? And we, we, These are very recognizable people. However, he never forgot his Aberdeen roots. He used uh, to regularly return to visit his uh, Art Leslie. Okay, I, I think we're going off, off, off the point right now. Uh, uh, so he campaigned to save credits in his capital. Okay, proud to have been born and bred in uh, uh, Aberdeen. Uh, uh, I remember seeing Doris Day's first movie, The Romance at Season, hearing two very knowledgeable uh, uh, Aberdeenians say, she'll never make it a star. Really? Doris Day? Doris Day is super hot. Oh, my God. Especially young Doris Day. Are you out of your mind? Woo. Okay, I I'm, I just got flushed, mate. I, I, I'm only fl- flesh and blood. And, mate, you think, are you think you don't think young Doris Day would be a star? I mean, uh, um... I don't understand why. Um, all right, so let the, the, me go. Scott who hey. Uh, had Michael Shaw taken over the role uh, of the console of the TARDIS, he would have been one of the four Sc- Scottish actors that played Doctor Who. Dundee born uh, Sylvester McCoy picked up the sonic screwdriver on, uh, as the seventh Doctor from 87 to 89. He was a time lord of the original run before uh, mo- uh, the series was mothballed, although he made a brief appearance in the 96 movie where he regenerated into, into Paul McGann. McCoy played the Doctor with a whimsical and thoughtful character, but with a secret and manip- manipulative edge. Yeah, boy. he like, Again, I watched Drag- uh, Ghostlight the other night. He is just dicking with Ace. I mean, like, for no apparent reason. Right? I mean, well, for apparent reason. Tennant's S3 English accent. 
Then Enter the TARDIS in 2005. It was Christmas 2005. Come on. That's like the last gasp, okay? Uh, quickly became the most loved version of the character, uh, one of the most beloved versions of the character. Uh, although the uh, Bathgate born actor adopted an Ezra English accent for his 10th Doctor, Ryder Rusty Davis said he didn't want Tennant using his own Scottish tones as he didn't want the Doctor's accent uh, touring regions. Yeah, and also I think they really wanted to go back to a um, like a more traditional. Uh, 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 somewhat posh Doctor Who, right? So, you know, Doctor Who kind of has this poshness about him. Uh, but, okay, a posh person is rejected being posh. Uh, 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 Tennant was said it was a childhood dream to play play Doctor Who. Uh, when he was announced in the role, he said, uh, uh, who wouldn't want to be the Doctor? I've got even got my own TARDIS. <laughs> and he did. Uh, uh, Capaldi wanted to be more alien. Freaking love Capaldi, right? Freaking love Capaldi. Glasgow star Peter Cabaldi became the 12th Doctor in 2013. He previously guest starred along Tenet in uh, Fars of Pompeii and also in Torchwood, Children of Earth. Uh, he got to keep his accent, uh, all, uh, saying that he did feel closer to the character. His approach to the Doctor was more alien, saying he doesn't quite understand human beings or really care about their appro uh, much about their approval. Uh, there have, of course, been many Scottish links to Doctor. This is just a rabbit warren that's going down. From the iconic character Jamie, played by Fraser Hines in Patrick Trousing Years, to David Tennant's uh, Doctor battling werewolves and threatening uh, Queen Victoria. Uh, uh, and for some reason, we got Liz Sladen there. Aberdeen itself was featured in Doctor Who dropping off a companion, uh, Sarah Jane Smith. Ah, oh, so this is the last time uh, 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 in uh, what she thought was Croydon. Uh, leading Scott played uh, Rona Monroe. That's Robert, R Rona Monroe? Okay. Uh, is the only writer of penned. Episodes of both the classic and the modern era. Yeah, the Eats of Light didn't go down that well. Uh, uh, but thank God for Jodie, right? Thank God for Jodie, because uh, uh, it, it, that was the lowest rated episode. And then Jodie Whittaker came along. Yeah, other people uh, uh, who love Jodie, Colin Baker, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, who, who is uh, uh, Jimmy Carter's favorite president? It's got to be Biden, right? It's the only guy who made him look good. Um, uh, she was, uh, what was it? She said it had a Capaldi episode featuring Picts and Romans in the northeast of what would eventually become Aberdeen. Uh, in 2003, Dundee author, uh, <laughs> really, uh, wrote a book, uh, The Death Pit. Don't you remember that? Uh, which saw the Time Lord up against odds against a, a golf spa hotel in 1978, uh, in Aboreth. Blimey, are we okay? We're nearly done. Thank God with that. Uh, at the time, the author, Alison, said, I know Aberreth a bit. I lived there for a few months. And Carl said, it seems a, a suitable place. I wanted a small town. I just remember, okay, whatever. Alison said the backdrop to the story in Aberreth is that the action was confined to the mystical, side, side, uh, mystical kind of resort or hotel complex. Is it done? Blimey. Okay. So he was nearly the doctor. <laughs> I was nearly the doctor. Uh, 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 amazingly, amazingly, uh, um, uh, uh, Radio Times had, had an interesting article, right? Uh, I, honestly, I think we're just going to see more interesting articles on Radio Times. Uh, uh, and in, the, the show media in general, as we get further and further away from Jodie, uh, um, ah, man, I, I think the Jodie is just going to be a distant memory very, very soon. And, you know, I, I really think the reason I think that is I don't think anybody... I don't think there's enough people actually genuinely like it, right? I think, much like Star Trek fans, Star Trek fans do not like not liking Star Trek. I've certainly discovered that through Discovery and uh, uh, Picard. They just they don't like not liking Star Trek, even the, even when it's the opposite of Star Trek. And I think that's the same of Jodie Whittaker, right? I think most fans were like, they don't want to not like Doctor Who, right? And also, you know, you had you've had this like media insanity saying anybody didn't like it is because they're an icky wicky waifers or bigger and they don't like women. I, just the weirdest, weirdest. I mean, like really, it's the weirdest uh, uh, accusation you could possibly make. But there, there, there you go. We 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 uh, we live in weird times. Anyway, they didn't want to see it being on the wrong side of history. Some people pretended it wasn't awful. It was awful. I'm sorry. It was awful. It's going to have no traction. It's never, ever, ever going to be remembered. Uh, uh, um, I think it might be mentioned 
occasionally, but I'm going to edit out those mentions. Quite frankly, I think it's nearly gone forever. Uh, uh, as sadly as Michael Shirt, who would have been a great doctor. What can I tell you? My name is Sheila Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah.